my date, her ex, and David Bowie. She had the prettiest face I'd ever seen, and I couldn't believe I had a date with her. My friend set nonfictionist up. He said you'll like her, she's really cute and friendly. I asked why he didn't date her. The answer was that he did actually date her once, but it didn't work out. Oh, so I'm dating hand-me-downs now? What's wrong with her? Anyway, I went on the date and all was well. She seemed nice. She looked like a young version of Julia Roberts. I get that a lot, she said when I told her. We went out to a restaurant and had a long quirky conversation. As I drove her home we agreed to meet again the following weekend. Come Friday I pick her up, and as we are driving on the main road toward the city, she suddenly cries out, that's him. She points to a meeting car. I see a car slowing down and making a U-turn behind us. It turns out her psycho ex has latched on and is now following us down the highway. I pick up speed as I try to grasp what is going on. Was I in a movie? A gorgeous young woman is riding with me at high speed while screaming go go go, and I'm like James Bond, trying to shake of the bad guy tailing us. I signaled towards the off-ramp and swirled the car slightly towards the exit, then abruptly turned back onto the highway. My little trick worked. Mr. Psycho shot down the off-ramp and disappeared out of sight. That's a relief, she said, well done, as she leaned towards me and smiled. I was now officially her hero. Let's go to my place, I said, because this maniac doesn't know me or where I live. We can hide the car in my garage, pull the curtains and just enjoy an evening by the fireplace. So, off we went towards my home. No cars were following, as far as I could see. As I turned into the driveway I told her to wait in the car while I went to open the carport. I flung it up and turned around to go back to the car, and there he was, right in front of me. He really was a psycho. I could see the madness in his eyes. I knew I had about three seconds to decide what to do, run, attack or use some kind of diplomatic approach to defuse the situation. Meanwhile my date had jumped out of the car and was shouting at him to back off. I'm not a fist-fighting kind of guy, but at this moment I thought maybe my best bet is to act tough. I took two steps toward the intruder, looked him straight in the eyes, and said, you get the FK of my property or there's gonna be some big trouble. He flinched, reviling insecurity, so I took another two steps and said in my most manly voice, did you hear me? FK off. He turned around and walked away. I could pause the story right here and talk about how dangerous this situation might have turned out, but I won't, so back to my adventures with a Julia Roberts look-alike. We had dated a few weeks without incident, and her birthday was coming up. I asked her if there was anything she wished for. I want to go see David Bowie live in the big city, she replied. I knew she loved Bowie, so I got the tickets and off we went. It was a five-hour drive, and we had no plan other than seeing David Bowie. The concert was amazing. It was outdoors under She Stars. There must have been many thousands in the arena. About halfway through the show I felt someone tugging at my jacket. It was my girlfriend. She was white as a sheet. Don't turn around, she said, but he's here. Who is here, I asked as Bowie was dancing on stage singing Rebel Rebel. Him, the psycho, she quivered. We need to go, now. So, we snuck out through the crowd and found the car. What now? We had nowhere to go. The only thing I could think of was to keep moving, so we drove into the night. Soon we found ourselves on the highway towards our hometown. I was assessing the situation, considering all eventualities. If this maniac saw us leave the show, he was probably on our tail already. With a five-hour drive there was a good chance he'd catch up. Maybe if we turn off the highway and find a country road, we can trick him once again, I said. So we started looking for a suitable exit. After a short while we found a good spot to get off the highway. We turned down a gravel road into the woods. I remember thinking what if he saw our tail lights and decided to lurk around, to come and kill us during the night. He might have a knife or an axe. You never know what a jealous psycho is capable of. After a short ride I turned the car into a bumpy tractor road between the trees. It led us up to a small field of grass. This could be a good place to rest and wait for the madman to give up. But still, my fear got the best of me, 
so I kept going over the field to the far end. Even then, I felt the need to back the car into some bushes. If he had seen us exiting the highway, he'd have a hard time spotting our car now, I thought as I turned off the engine. So, we folded down the back seat of my wagon and laid down to rest. We were both pretty exhausted. All I could hear was my heart still thumping faster than normal. I also heard a low rumble in the distance. It was like a deep continuous vibration. Before I could make up my mind what the sound could be, it grew louder. The car started shaking. It was like a UFO was hovering directly above us, ready to suck us up for examination and probing. Then the flashing started. Rapid strobes of white light flashed fast and lit up the inside of the car. I saw my girlfriend's pretty face lighting up, again and again, with a wild expression of disbelief on it. It ended as quick as it had started. Soon we could only hear that same low rumble. Then nothing. I searched for my flashlight and climbed through the bushes around the car to look for clues. I found railroad tracks only centimeters from the back of my car. Wow, was all I could say to the girl back in the car. Wow. We broke up after this. Too much drama for my liking. I have no idea what happened to her, or the psycho for that matter. I'm living happily in ignorance about them.